David Smith here with one more Flip Classroom math video. Three tips before we start. Remember, you can pause the video at any time to catch up with your notes. You can also turn on the caption down below and watch my words go by on your screen. Lastly, if you feel like you can do this, you can speed up the playback and get through the video a little bit faster. Today's topic covers right triangle trigonometry. And we're going to do a bunch of different things inside right triangles. And you're going to use those things to analyze right triangles and then also solve problems inside them. But before we get into the trigonometry part, I just want to remind you of the Pythagorean theorem. This is a fundamental geometric theorem that you should have known already. I just want to quickly review it. In a right triangle with my uh, 90 degree angle right there, I have two shorter sides, A and B, and then I have my long side, which is called the hypotenuse. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The way we say that in words is that the sum of the squares of the shorter sides are equal to the square of the hypotenuse in a right triangle. So that's assumed prior knowledge. Let's move on to trigonometry. We start with Sokotoa trigonometry. That's Sokatoa. That's the mnemonic that you could use to help remember the three ratios. The first one, sine, is opposite over hypotenuse. That's the so. And what that means is that sine of angle A is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So sine A equals A over C. And what that is, is just whatever length that side is, and whatever length that side is, you divide one by the other, and you're going to get some decimal number. And that is sine A. So the sine of an angle is just some decimal number. So what I want you to do now is pause the video and write down the ratio for sine B. What is that going to be using this diagram? So sine B is just B over C, because now our angle is up here. So now B is the opposite side. C is always the hypotenuse. So that's, that is the ratio of sine. So let's take a look at cosine. Cosine for ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the side that's next to the angle over the hypotenuse. So cosine of angle A would be B, because B is next to A. It's not across, it's next to. So it'd be B over C. So that's that ratio for cosine A. I want you to pause the video and write down the ratio for cosine of angle B. So cosine of B is adjacent over hypotenuse, so A over C. So that's cosine of B. Let's take a look at tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's the TOA, T-O-A, opposite over adjacent. So tangent of angle A is going to be opposite over adjacent. Notice how there's no hypotenuse in tangent. It's just the opposite and the adjacent sides. So for tangent of A, it's just gonna be A over B. Pause the video real quick and write down tangent of angle B. So tangent of B is just B over A. It's, the, it's just flipping the fraction from tangent of angle A. Now, there's a whole lot more we can do with this. You might be noticing some commonalities or some relationships between the ratios, and you're seeing good stuff. We'll exploit that later in this class. But right now, you just need to know that this is, these are the basic ratios for trigonometry, and we're going to manipulate those to solve for some things in right triangles. All right, let's do four problems using Sokotoa trigonometry. The first two, we're gonna find a side length, and then the second two, we're gonna go ahead and find some angles. So first off, here are two problems. This is assumed prior knowledge, so what I want you to do is pause the video, and let's just do both those problems, come back. Okay, so I set up my equation. Cosine 28 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over 10. I rearrange my equation. When the variable's up high, you switch the two, the, these two deals. And so I get x equals 10 cosine 28, which is 8.83. Moving right along. This one needs tangent because I have uh, tan 52 is opposite over adjacent, which is 39 over x. When the variable's down low, you switch, you know. So I switch this over to there, solve for that, and I get 30.5 for x in that one. Moving right along. Now we're being asked to find angles. Again, assumed prior knowledge. So pause the video, think about that, solve these two. All right, let's see how you did. Here's my first one. I set up my regular trigonometric equation. So I have cosine theta 
equals 18 over 38. Cosine theta is 18 over 38. Now, I know my sides, I just don't know my angle, so I use the inverse trig function. So that we write cosine minus 1, 18 over 38, equals theta. Now, you need to know how to do this on your calculator, and when you put that in there, you get 61.7 degrees for theta. Moving right along. For this one, I recognize that I need sine. I have, from theta, I have opposite over hypotenuse, so sine theta is 401 over 565. I take my inverse sine function of that fraction, 401 over 565, that's theta, put that in my calculator, and what I get is 45.2 degrees. All right, let's look at a geometric figure. Now, this is called an isosceles right triangle. So I have my 90 degree angle. Isosceles triangles have two equal sides, and in this case, they are these two sides. I've labeled them with one, but it could be 50 and 50, or x and x, doesn't matter. You've got two equal sides, and then the sides opposite, or the angles opposite them are also equal. So in this case, they have to be 45 degrees, because that's 90, triangle has 180, so these two have to be 45 each. So that's an isosceles right triangle. Now you're gonna have word problems, or diagram problems, where they're gonna show you some stuff that you'll have to use to deduce that, oh, I'm looking at an isosceles right triangle. All right, let's take a look at our isosceles right triangle and figure some more stuff out about it. First one, pause the video and find the length of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is gonna be root two. If these two are one, the hypotenuse is root two. And we get that by using the Pythagorean theorem. One squared plus one squared is gonna equal this squared. Solve for hypotenuse and I get root two. So if side one, if these sides are x, then this is going to be x times root two, okay? All right, now I want you to go through your sine, cosine, and tangent for 45 degrees and write down the correct ratios for those. Pause the video and do that. All right, so check this out. Sine 45, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. It's just one over root two. Cosine 45 is one over root two. And tangent 45 is one over one, which is just one. So these are exact values, okay? If you put this in your calculator, you're gonna get a decimal that goes on forever. So again, pay attention to the prompt. If it says exact, you wanna show something like this. Or, we have this convention. We don't like roots in the bottom of fractions. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is a convention. So we simplify, it's considered more simplified if you do what's called rationalizing the denominator. So I'm just gonna walk you through that. What we do is we multiply this by a version of one that looks like that. Root two over root two is just one. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna make the fraction be root two over two. And so that's what we do. So you're gonna see that value for sine 45, cosine 45, or anything where you have a root in the bottom, you're gonna see this little trick happen. All right, here's another special right triangle. It's called a 30, 60, 90, because 30 degrees there, 60 degrees there, and then, of course, there's our 90 degree angle. Now, this one has some interesting properties. If this shortest leg is one, then the hypotenuse is two, and the, the longer leg is root three. So a way to think about that is whatever this side is, this is gonna be twice that. So let's do it this way. If that side is x, then this side is going to be 2x, and this side is going to be root 3x. All right, now I want you to figure out what sine 30 is. Using the diagram there, write down the value for sine 30. So for my diagram, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine of 30 is 1 half. Now we all know you can take your calculator and you can do the the sine of 30 degrees. So if you want to do that right now, go ahead, but you're going to find that it's 0.5. Now find the cosine, I'm sorry, the sine of 60. What's that going to be? Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Here we are with our 60 degree angle, opposite over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. Now an important thing to notice, if the question wants the exact value, you've got to show that number. If you put cos or sine of 60 in your calculator, you're going to get some kind of decimal that just goes on forever. 
That would not be the correct answer. You would need to state root 3 over 2. That's an exact answer. Okay, now let's do cosine 30 and cosine 60. Go ahead, pause the video, and write down the ratios for these two. All right, let's see how you did. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, because cosine 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now for cosine 60, it's 1 half. Cosine 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 1 over 2. Now you may have noticed this before, that sine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 60. So that's a nice thing to know. We'll capitalize on that a little later this year. Go ahead, pause the video, write down the ratios for tan 30 and tan 60. So tan 30 is 1 over root 3, and tan 60 is root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. Now, here's the thing. If you hit the button on your calculator and find out what the decimal is for root 3, that's the same decimal you'll get if you do tangent of 60. Let's look at another kind of a triangle. Equilateral. Remember, there's three types of triangles. There's scalene triangles, which no sides are equal. They're all different. We have isosceles triangles, which we showed you a, a right triangle version of an isosceles. That's where two sides are equal. And then the third type of, of triangle is an equilateral triangle, which I've drawn here. Three sides that are equal. So if you're like me, you probably notice there's no right angle in this triangle. So how come it's showing up in a lesson on right angled trigonometry? Pause the video and think about that. Maybe draw a little extra on that diagram. So if we draw an altitude from this point down to this side, that's a 90 degree angle. That is going to create some interesting things for us. So now I want you to pause the video. If this side is 1 and this side is 1, I want you to put as much information on that diagram as you can using what you know from this lesson and maybe a little bit more. Let me get you started. The, four, the three corners of an equilateral triangle also have the same angles. So they're 60, 60, and that whole angle there is 60. Now that should get you started. See if you can put some more stuff on here. All right? So if that's 60, that's 90. This has to be 30, as does that one. So now suddenly I know I've got this 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So that allows me to say that if the hypotenuse is 1, then this short leg has to be one half. Remember, the hypotenuse is twice the length of the short leg. So that gives me that. Now, pause the video and figure out what the distance of the altitude is. So the altitude is going to be root 3 over 2 because the altitude is root 3 times the short leg. The short leg is one half, so the altitude is going to be root 3 over 2. So now we know a whole lot about that triangle. All right, let's do a quick little problem here. This is an equilateral triangle, A, B, C. All sides are equal. This side is 24. Now it's going to ask you, find B, D. So go ahead, pause the video, think about that, do the math, and find B, D. There's two ways to do this one. The first way that I used here is the Pythagorean theorem. I know that this squared plus this squared equals that squared. So I set up my equation here. I rearrange to solve for BD, which gives me 24 squared minus 12 squared. And then I took my square roots and I simplified. If I'm looking for an exact answer, 12 root 3 is the correct answer. If I'm just looking for a distance to 3 sig figs, that's 20.8. Let's do a reasonableness check. If the hypotenuse is 24 and the short leg is 12, it makes sense that that's 20.8. It has to be between these two for sure. So it passes the reasonableness test. Now, I want you to pause the video and use what you know about 30, 60, 90 right triangles to find this length. All right, so I went ahead and labeled the 30, 60 uh, degree angles in this portion of our equilateral triangle. That was the hint I gave you in the prompt to figure this one out. Then what I did is it often is really, really helpful when you have a more complicated figure to draw another picture of just the part that you're looking at. So I just took this left side right triangle and put that down, marked my degrees, and then I marked what I know about a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So if that side's x, that's 2x, and that's x times root 3. And so now I can just figure this out because I know that x is 12, and then this side, this length here, is just 12 times root 3. So BD equals 12 root 3, which is what we got using Pythagorean theorem. 
That's some of the beauty and the joy of trigonometry and geometries. There's lots of ways to find your answers. You could also just use Sokotoa trigonometry. You'd be looking for this side. You could use cosine, sine, or tangent to find BD, and indeed you'd get the same decimal. You'd get the same answer. All right, let's do a problem. Now this is gonna draw from the stuff that we've done before in this video. So you might need to pause and flip back to your notes to figure out exactly how to answer this one. So what I've done is I've given you a right triangle marked theta. Theta is a Greek letter that's very commonly used for an angle that you don't know. It's a variable for theta. You're gonna see alpha, beta, theta, omega, phi, all these different Greek letters get used to represent angles in geometric figures. So you just know that that's 90, that's four, and that's eight. So these are two side lengths. So pause the video. I want you to find the exact value of theta. All right, this one just requires a critical thinking leap. I wanna do a couple steps here to kind of set you up for that leap. So cosine theta, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine theta is four over eight, which is one half. Now that should trigger something. I know that there's the cosine of some angle makes one half, just from what we talked about in terms of our, our triangles. Then you take a look at this and go, well, this side is half of that side. That should ring a bell that this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So we know that that one's 30 and that one is 60. So I'm using that knowledge to make the jump from here, that theta has to be 60 degrees. Here's another one. Here's a triangle, sides, angles marked. Here's your prompt, find X. Go ahead, pause the video and do that. All right, so recognize I have a 30 degree angle there. Since that's 90, we know that's 60. We have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And we know that the hypotenuse is twice the length of the shorter leg. So I just multiplied it by two, got 21.6. Now, pause the video and find the length of the longer leg. I've marked it Y. So now I remember that the longer leg is root three times the shorter leg. So all I did is I did root three times 10.8 and I got 18.7. Notice how these are decimal approximations. Well, actually that's not, but this one is because we have root three in there. Um, but it didn't say find exactly. So we're not worried about rounding. Last thing. We need to talk about right angles and other angles inside and as part of 3D geometric figures. So first off, a right angle between a line and a plane can be drawn just like this. I'm drawing my, my, my line is coming right down to the plane and it's perpendicular to the plane. So any angle that you measure between the line and the plane is going to be 90 degrees, okay? So that's the first concept here. Now let's take that and bring it into this pyramid here and take a look. So first off, here's a line from the top. This is the altitude of the pyramid that goes from the top corner all the way down to the base of the pyramid, the plane, the, the square base at the bottom of the pyramid. And I've drawn that 90 degrees there. That's that same 90 as that one. Now we have two other angles that are important. We have this angle here, which I've called theta, and that angle here, which I've called beta. Now this angle is the angle between a face and the plane at the bottom. So you could think of this line as just cruising right down the face, right down the middle of the face of this pyramid, and it's making an angle with the base of the pyramid right there, which I'm calling theta. Angle between face and base. Now beta here is the angle between the edge of the pyramid and the base. And that's gonna be a little different than the angle between the face and the base. So I'm using beta, angle between edge and base. Now, when you look at these figures in your textbook and for problems, you have to kind of dig in and try to figure out which all these little angles are, and then you can draw right triangles, and you can use what you know to figure out what you're being asked to figure out. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to write down any remaining questions so you can bring them to our next class. Also remember that you can watch the video again to remind yourself of what we did or deepen your understanding. If you enjoyed yourself, please click like or subscribe.